so you are getting ready for a backpacking adventure. You get your backpack, you gather all of your gear, but what is the best way to get all of your gear into your pack? I will show you. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put my tent and rainfly into a compression set. The next thing I'm going to do is take my sleeping bag and put it into another compression set. For the next pieces of equipment I show you how to pack, um, I'm going to be using these three dry bags. Now these particular ones actually came in a package of three from Walmart. They cost about $10 and I bought them a couple of years ago and they've held up great over time. You can just wash them out and reuse them after each hike. The benefit of using dry bags like this is not only do they keep your equipment dry, but the different colors and different sizes help you organize the equipment in your pack. So without having to open them up and look around or have different things floating around inside your pack in different areas where they could get lost or move around, um, you'll know exactly what's inside each bag without having to open it up and it really helps keep your pack super organized. The first dry bag I'm going to use is the green one, which is the biggest one, and I'm going to use it to fit all the clothes that I would need to bring on a multi-day hike. Um, if you don't end up buying the Walmart brand, look for a bag about this size. And the reason why the size is important is because I've found that it keeps me from overpacking. So I can fit all the clothes that I need and none of the ones that I don't. If it gets too overstuffed, then I realize that I have too much stuff and I need to switch something out, lose a pair of socks, lose a shirt, something like that. But for most cases and most long hikes, this is all you'll need. For this demonstration, I have an extra t-shirt that I would use as a camp shirt or to sleep in, a pair of sweatpants. Now these are a little bit bulky. Now you might want to do a pair of track pants or a pair of long underwear or something like that. But for this, they'd be just fine. Then I have three pairs of socks and two pairs of sock liners. There's even a little extra room where I could fit another pair of socks or maybe like a long underwear shirt or something like that. Oh, before I close it up, one last thing. I also like to put in a Ziploc bag like this. That's just in case I have a pair of particularly wet, soaked, or stinky socks, something like that, that I don't want to get on the rest of my clothes. I can just stuff it in there. That's the clothes. Next, I'm gonna use the orange dry bag to fit everything I would need for cooking. In this case, I have a fuel canister, cooking pot, pocket rocket stove, and Bic lighter. I'm also going to put a handkerchief in there that can be used as a pot holder, but I like to put it inside the cook pot like this to keep any crud or rust from getting inside my cooking pot. It also keeps it from rattling around inside the bag. And I just take it, put it inside the bag like this. And as you can see, there's enough room to fit another fuel canister or something else you might use for cooking in there. There we go, and that's the cooking stuff. In the blue dry bag, which is the smallest one, I put my medical kit, which I'll break down in a future episode. All my electronic wires and chargers and headphones and things like that, extra memory cards, whatever I would need, depending on what kind of trip I was taking. And I also put my cell phone in here. Now obviously if you're going to be taking a lot of pictures or something like that, I would leave my cell phone out. But in most cases, I would have my cell phone inside the dry bag, just in case. So that's the blue dry bag with the medical kit, electronics, and cell phone. With your equipment nice and organized, now you can focus on fitting everything into the pack itself. Um, there are a couple of things you want to focus on when you're doing this. One, you want to try to keep the heaviest objects low in the pack to keep the center of gravity low and keep your weight from shifting around too much. It's also usually the most comfortable way to do it. Next, you want to think about how you're going to be using the different objects in the pack. Something like your sleeping bag that you'll only use at the end of the day would be good to have way down in the bottom of the pack. Other things that you'll be pulling out and using multiple times throughout the day, possibly a cell phone, medical kit, food bag, things like that, rain jacket, you'd want in the top of the pack so you can easily pull them out and put them on or have them in an outside pocket where you can get to it without too much trouble. The backpack I'm using is a Golight Quest backpack. Um, I have it lined with a contractor trash bag. 
It helps keep the gear dry. It's just one more line of defense against having your stuff get soaked in case something goes wrong. Um, I would typically use one that fits inside a trash compactor. This one's a little bit big, but it doesn't really matter. You can just fold it over once you have all your gear inside. So first, I want to think about what's heavy and what I'll be using least often throughout the day. So that would be the tent. Next, I'm going to put in my ground cloth for my tent. It's pretty compact and small, but I want to slide it right in next to the tent at the bottom of the bag so I know exactly where it is. The next thing, the sleeping bag. Next, my clothes. Then the bag with all the cooking equipment. Next, I have the poles for the tent, which I want to keep centered inside the bag so it doesn't have more weight on one side or the other. After all that gear is in the bag, I'm going to fold up the top of the trash bag so everything down there stays nice and dry. Then I take the rain jacket and put it in the top of the pack here. I like to keep the rain jacket near the top of the pack because it's easily accessible in case it starts raining or something like that. I can just stop, pull it out and throw it on. Um, I might actually have a fleece in there depending on the weather as well, but if I had a fleece I would probably put it in the top of the trash bag before I folded it over to help keep it a little bit dry. The final item that I put in the main compartment of my backpack is the food bag. This food bag happens to be the same color and kind as the one I use for my clothes. If you wanted to be super organized you could buy one that's a completely different color, keep everything nice and separate. For me this one works just fine. The reason why it's good to use a dry bag for a food bag is because it has a little handle on the top in case you need to hang it to keep it out of the way of mice or bears or something like that. And it helps conceal the, the smells just a little bit, so that's a good thing for that. And the reason why I like to keep a food bag at the top is because, you know, you get hungry throughout the day, you want to reach in and have a snack or something like that, and it's easily accessible right there at the top of your bag. In this Go Light Quest backpack, it has a large pocket right at the top of the pack. Um, where you can put in items that you might need to access multiple times throughout the day. So in this I like to put my medical kit with my cell phone and all my electronics, my headlamp, and my collapsible water bottle. This pack also has a large front pocket on it where I'd store items like my pack cover, and a bag that has my notebook, pen, and guidebook or maps in it. In the front pocket I also put toilet paper with hand sanitizer. The last compartment this bag has are these little hip pockets. This one I use to store my knife. Um, if I wanted to access maps a number of times throughout the day I might have a map in there or I might have my headphones if I wanted to use those a couple of times throughout the day. Um, they're just great little pockets for little things you might want to access here and there. Depending on the weather, I would put my sunglasses in the other hip pocket right there. The next thing I did was to attach my sleeping pad to the bottom of my pack. Um, in this case, I used a piece of twine. I couldn't find any rope, but um, normally I would use a piece of rope and tie it securely to the bottom of the backpack. Finally, I would take two one liter water bottles and slide one in each side into these pockets on the side of the backpack. And that's it. That's how I pack my backpack. One thing I did leave out was aqua mirror drops, which I use for water purification. Those are about the size of two decks of cards, and I would have just slid those right into that blue medical bag that I have at the top of the backpack, so they could be easily accessible when I need to use them throughout the day. I tried to keep this pretty standard for how I pack for a multi-day backpacking trip. Depending on what the weather is or where you are in the world, you might end up bringing different equipment, but I think the rules still apply that you'll want to keep your center of gravity low by packing the heaviest items near the bottom of your pack. Um, you'll also want to keep things you'll want to access throughout the day in an easily accessible spot so you don't have to go digging through your pack every time you're looking for something. And also, I like to keep things organized with the dry bags. I think that really helps. Thanks for watching this episode of Hike Slam. Slam that subscribe button. Every week I'll have a new video that covers gear reviews, trails, national parks, food, camping, hiking, outdoors, all kinds of stuff. You don't want to miss it.